It's Test J, Passage 1, Story Time. Sit back and relax. Uh, enjoy as I read you this passage from the Law School Admission Test. It says, For decades, there has been a deep rift between poetry and fiction in the United States, especially in academic settings. If you say so, semicolon, I guess you're going to tell me now about this rift between poetry and fiction in academic settings. Graduate writing programs in universities, for example, train students as poets or as writers of fiction, but almost never as both. Okay, that is a good example of this rift. Both poets and writers of fiction have tended to support this separation, in large part because the current conventional wisdom holds that poetry should be elliptical and lyrical, reflecting inner states and narrative sorry, reflecting in interstates and processes of thought or feeling, whereas character and narrative events, like story, are the stock in trade of fiction. Okay, so the first paragraph has told us about this rift enforced by academia and also by the writers and poets themselves, fiction writers and poets themselves. Poetry is supposed to be, you know, it's, it's like this conventional wisdom among even poets and writers of fiction that poetry is supposed to be meandering and lyrical and elliptical and then fiction is supposed to be, oh no, no, we're going to tell you about characters and those characters are going to go into a story. And these are two separate realms. At the end of the first paragraph, I, I don't like take notes or underline or highlight or diagram or anything like that, but I do think about where they might go next, right? They've told us about a rift. Are they going to tell us that this rift is good? Are they going to tell us that this rift is bad? Are they going to tell us that the rift needs to be closed? Are they going to tell us that the rift should be widened? I don't really know where they're going. They seem pretty even-handed about it. I guess I might predict that they're going to say it's bad, though. Um, Maybe the word rift indicates something negative. Um, making little predictions as we go is one of our best strategies for reading comprehension. If you can't predict where they're going to go next, then maybe you didn't read it well enough what you've read so far. So I'm always making little predictions about where they're going to go next. And I'm thinking, well, maybe you're going to tell me that this rift is bad and we should close the rift. Second paragraph. Certainly it is true that poetry and fiction are distinct genres, but why have specialized education and literary territoriality resulted from this distinction? So they grant that poetry and fiction are different, but then they ask basically a rhetorical question, why does this rift why, between in academia um, and in literary practice why does this rift really exist? The answer lies perhaps in a widespread attitude in US culture, which often casts a suspicious eye on the generalist. Those with knowledge and expertise in multiple areas risk charges of dilettantism, as if ability in one field is diluted or compromised by accomplishment in another. Um, you know, I'm an LSAT specialist. And so I do have to admit that I might sort of judge people who teach LSAT and GRE and GMAT and SAT and ACT and like little kids math. How can you be an expert in all of those things at once? Um, I don't think it's just because I'm an American that I have this judgment, but at least I understand what they're saying, right? Like, yeah, I can see how you could be jack of all trades, but master of none. I get that. <clears throat> fortunately, it says. Okay, now, the word fortunately has to jump off the page at you here if you're doing it right, because they didn't need to make this judgment that they're about to make. So far, it's been fact, 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 fact. Now, all of a sudden, the author clearly shows you their opinion with the word fortunately. What is so fortunate? What is this thing that you like so much? Well, there are signs that the bias against writers who cross generic boundaries is diminishing. So I predicted 
maybe you think this rift is bad. And the first sentence of the third paragraph clearly supports my prediction that, yeah, you're saying it's fortunate that this rift is closing, so you think the rift is bad. One important example of this trend is Rita Dove, an African-American writer highly acclaimed for both her poetry and her fiction. Okay, so here's somebody crossing the, the boundaries. And the author says that this is fortunate that it's happening and Rita Dove is an important example of this trend. A few years ago, speaking at a conference entitled Poets Who Write Fiction, Dove expressed gentle incredulity about the habit of segregating the genres. Um, credulous is the exact opposite of how I want you to be on the LSAT, okay? I want you to be incredulous about basically everything you read. Credulous is an insult. Credulous is like, oh, well, it says right here on the page, therefore that just has to be a fact. I want you to be incredulous. <clears throat> Rita Dove here, she's being gentle about it. She sounds like a sweetheart, but she's being incredulous about this uh, <clears throat> habit of segregating the genres. So she's basically like, really? Why, what? Why do we have to have poets and then fiction writers? That's gentle incredulity. Um, she had grown up reading and loving both fiction and poetry, she said, unaware of any purported danger lurking in attempts to mix the two. She also studied for some time in Germany, where, she observes, poets write plays, novelists compose libretti, playwrights write novels, they would not understand our restrictiveness. So she's giving an example in Germany of people crossing the boundaries in a way that in the United States, at least, uh, hasn't been common at all. All right, last paragraph. It makes little sense, Dove believes, to persist in the restrictive approach to poetry and fiction prevalent in the US because each genre shares in the nature of the other. So Rita Dove, this important example of someone who crosses the boundaries in her own work, is also out there at these conferences or whatnot, pointing out, hey, there's lots of similarities between poetry and fiction. Now, I don't know what those are, but I'm pretty sure that's what's gonna come next. Indeed, her poetry offers example after example of what can only be properly regarded as lyric narrative. So her poetry, her poems have story in them. So her poems are crossing the boundaries by including story. Her use of language in these poems is undeniable, undeniably lyrical. That is, it evokes emotion and interstates without requiring the reader to organize ideas or events in a particular linear structure, which is how poetry was supposed to be, right? Poetry has been traditionally thought of as this lyrical, elliptical thing. The language she's using is lyrical and elliptical, but it's also including story. Yet this lyric expression simultaneously presents the elements of a plot in such a way that the reader is led repeatedly to take account of clusters of narrative details within the lyric flow. That's just doubling down on the idea that her poetry includes story elements. Thus, while the language is lyrical, it often comes to constitute, cumulatively, a work of narrative fiction. Great. That's, that feels to me like it said the same thing five times. I'm kind of going like, yeah, yeah, I get it. But that's part of how this should feel. If you're doing it right, by the time you get to the end of the passage, you should be like, yeah, yeah, I'm tuned in. I know where you're going. I can see what you're doing here. I get it. We're going to go slower probably at the beginning of the passage so that we might be able to go a little bit faster at the end of the passage. Um, similarly, many passages in her fiction, though undeniably prose, that is not poetry, but prose, achieve the status of lyric and narrative through the use <coughs> of poetic rhythms and elliptical expression. So they had just said her poetry contains story, which was supposed to be the domain of fiction, at least as long as we have this rift. And then they say, not only that, but her fiction includes elliptical styles in a way that evokes poetry. So her fiction has elements of poetry. Her poetry has elements of fiction. Rita Dove is a real important example of someone who's closing this rift 
which the author thinks is fortunate. In short, Dove bridges the gap between poetry and fiction not only by writing in both genres, but also by fusing the two genres within individual works. So she does do works that are separate, but then she does also do poems that have story elements and, po and uh, stories that have poem elements, and she's crossing the, the, the divide.